Um, our Torah reading today obviously comes to us from the book of Leviticus. That's where we're up to. Okay, the, the portions are broken up by the rabbis because God said, read the Torah. You know, in a year, read the Torah. So they broke it up in 52 pieces. Pasha means portions. And this way they can fulfill that command. Real simple. It's from chapter 13. I love chapter 13. Most people think it's kind of boring. Um, first of all, just as a side note, I don't find anything in the Word of God boring. Okay? I, I don't need to highlight the Word of God because I would highlight the whole Bible. Um, this chapter, though, the whole chapter has to do with the diagnosis of leprosy. Now, I've been to some leper colonies. I'm sure most of you haven't. Some of the roughest things I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen anything like it. Nothing like it. Um, in some ways, the priest filled the role back then as the physician. And um, I think it's a very subtle reminder to us of the close connection between the physical and the spiritual. Chapter 13 is admittedly, by most theologians, a very difficult chapter as it deals with the technical descriptions of leprous and non-leprous diseases, as well as with leprosy in houses and on garments. Um, I'll quote something by a Dr. R.K. Harrison. He's an MD, practicing, and who happens to be a Hebrew scholar, a bona fide Hebrew scholar. He says, and I quote, no translation that is totally satisfactory for all the conditions covered by the Hebrew word, sara'at, but that it should be broad enough to include the disease we call Hansen's disease. If you're in the medical profession, you know that's the technical term for leprosy. Let's now have a look at our Torah portion. We have two verses, Leviticus 13, 45, 46. It says, everyone who has leprosy sores is to wear torn clothes, unbound hair, cover his upper lip, and cry, unclean, unclean. As long as he has sores, he will be unclean. Since he is unclean, he must live in isolation. He must live outside the camp. Um, the word leprosy, like I said, is sara'at, and it means a malignant skin disease. Therefore, a leper is diseased of the skin. Um, do you have that picture? There are a lot worse pictures that I could have chosen. I chose something very mild because I wasn't sure if children would be here. You can leave that up. A leper uh, back in the day was considered a miserable person, and sadly enough, we don't have leprosy much in our country, but in India it's incredibly prevalent in southeast India, and they're still considered miserable people. Um, they were put outside the camp. They had to wear torn clothes and keep their hair unkempt. They were to keep six feet away whenever they passed anyone. Whenever people approached, they had to cover their mouth and yell, cry out, unclean, unclean. It's a horrible disease, leprosy. It begins with little specks on the eyelids and on the palms of the hand. Then it spreads over the entire body. It bleaches the hair white. It casts a death-like paleness over the skin crusting it with scales and erupting it with oozing sores. But that's only what happens on the surface, guys. Penetrating the skin, the disease eats its way through the weave of nerves connected throughout the body's tissues. Soon the body becomes numb to the point of sensory deprivation, has no feeling, numb to both pleasure and pain. A toe can break and it will register no pain. And sensing no pain, the leper will continue walking only to worsen the break and accelerate the infection. And if the physical stigma of the disease wasn't enough, you have to think about the moral stigma that's attached to it. The disease was believed it would be a direct blow from God on the backs of the sinful. Meaning when somebody did have leprosy, they thought they were being punished by God. Then what follows is the cause and effect thinking. You know what I'm referring to? You know the way we think no pain without transgression? Things start swirling in our minds like, I wonder, you know, we have a, we have a room. Guys, you might want to help and let them know that they can still watch the thing. Um, 
and, and be, you know, and be happy. Um, things start swirling in the minds. Like, I wonder what I did to bring this on. Do you know what I'm talking about? Has that ever happened to you? Yes, to everybody. Like, what did I do? What did I do, God? I mean, some people go back to crazy things. Like, they're 70 years old and says, am I suffering because of that abortion I had when I was 15? It's just nuts what the enemy will have you believe. Like, it's your fault. They live not only with the horror of the disease, but with its shame and guilt as well. The leper lives in total isolation, without love and without hope. He lives without the simple joys and pleasures of life that you and I tend to take for granted, like being smiled at. being greeted on the street, going shopping, maybe taking a walk in the park, getting up and going to work, getting a wedding invitation, singing songs in the synagogue, celebrating the feast with family and friends. All these are barred to him forever. I wonder how long has it been since someone shook his hand, patted him on the back, put an arm around him, rubbed his shoulders, hugged him, stroked his hair, touched his cheek, wiped a tear from his eye, or kissed him. He wakes up early from a dream when people used to love him, even touched him. But it's just a dream. Reality is the cave, the colony, the leprosy. But this particular morning, the colony is buzzing with news about a man in town. It's Yeshua, the one who claims to be the Son of God, the one who heals the sick, makes the lame walk, and opens the eyes of the blind. So he hobbles off to find this miracle worker. As he gets closer and closer, his heart is racing faster and faster. Let's take a look at Matthew 8, 1 through 3. After Yeshua had come down from the hill, large crowds followed him. Then a man afflicted with leprosy came, kneeled down in front of him and said, Sir, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Yeshua reached out his hand, touched him and said, I am willing. Be cleansed. And at once he was cleansed from his leprosy. Yeshua had just finished delivering his one and only magnificent sermon. And people were amazed at the depth and the simplicity and the power behind it. And so, at last he arrives, but there's a throng of people. The leper wants to get to this, this miracle worker, but there's just too many people, and he's a leper. You know, how is he going to so he sheepishly draws near, and what do you think happens? The crowd parts. He's yelling, unclean, unclean, and they're saying, you know, like, like everybody with COVID, right? I'm, I'm going to catch it. It's in the air. And everybody went nuts and fearful, and somebody coughed, and you wanted to choke the life out of them, right? That's what fear does. So they part. He stops within arm's distance of Yeshua and just falls at his feet. 
The man looks up and begs, Sir, if you're willing, you can make me clean. You can. Yeshua looks at the man in his sunken eyes. He looks at his ashen skin. He sees the sores, and he sees the shame. Yeshua filled with compassion. He's filled, so it has to flow. Can't stand the vessel. So he reaches out to touch a leper, something nobody would do. That gesture, when he touched him on his head, said so much. Like, I love you. I care. I'm sorry. I understand. I want to help. Well, with that touch, goosebumps of feelings come over the man. Goosebumps he hasn't felt in years and years and years. Then all of a sudden, another surge rushes over him, this time all the way down to his toes. He looks down at his hands, and gone is the sickly color, and gone are the sores. He tests his fingertips. He has feeling. He makes a fist. He has strength. He looks back up at Yeshua, but he can't say a word. His whole life is stuck sideways in his throat. But soon the words will come, and he'll tell everyone about a Savior who is willing to touch a leper. So beautiful. So beautiful. There's another story I want you to see in Luke 17, a gospel that was written for the Greeks. They were looking for the perfect man, and it's all about Yeshua's compassion. Verses 11 to 14 says, On his way to Jerusalem, it's a different time, not when he came off the mountain, Yeshua passed along the border between Shamron and the Galil. It's north of Jerusalem, Samaria, and then north of that is the Galilee. As he entered one of the villages, ten men afflicted with leprosy met him. They stood at a distance, of course, and called out, Yeshua, Rabbi! Have pity on us. You have a tissue. Thanks. On seeing them, he said, go and let the Kohanim examine you. He's, that was the law. That's the Torah. Remember I told you they played the part of the physician? You have to understand, Yeshua was 100% law abiding. Where do we come off saying that it's not important anymore? And as they went, they were cleansed. As they were going to the priest, they were cleansed. Because of their diseased condition, they had to cry out from a distance. But all ten with leprosy were healed. Hallelujah, right? Well, let's go on with the story. Verses 15 to 16 says, One of them, as soon as he noticed that he had been healed, returned. Return is a very important word. Yes. Shouting praises to God and fell on his face at Yeshua's feet to thank him. Yes. Now, why does he add this? Now, he was from Shamron. Because religious people never get it. He was a Samaritan. Remember the woman at the well? A Samaritan. Remember the woman who begged for crumbs? Like a dog, a Canaanite. 
You see why Yeshua puts us in there? Because religious people, they don't need anything. They've got it together. They're holy. At least they think they are. They forget where they come from. Shouting praises to God. What is that? He's confessing spontaneous thanks. He noticed he's healed, so he's saying, you know what? Before I go to a priest, I'm going to the great and high priest. He fell on his face. That is the true posture of worship. Not this. Not this. On your face. And where? The true place of worship. At Yeshua's feet. Verses 17 to 18. Yeshua says, Weren't all of you? Healed? Was it just you? Where are the other nine? Was no one found coming back to give glory to God? Except for this foreigner? The lesson is very important for us, guys. The lesson is this. Nine wanted the healing, but only one wanted the healer. Most want the blessing. Few want the blesser. Most want the gifting. Few want the gifter. Most want the Savior. Few want the sovereign. Bottom line is, people want what they want. Last verse, verse 19. And to the man from Samaria, the Samaritan, he said, Get up, you may go, for your trust has saved you. Look at this word, sozo in the Greek, we're reading from the New Testament has three meanings. One, to rescue from danger or destruction. Good. Good. Two, to heal one suffering from a disease. Good. Right? But three, this is the winner, winner, chicken dinner right here. <laughs> to deliver from the penalties of the messianic judgment. Of course, it is coming. You see the leper turned around, right? What does that symbolize? Repentance. The leper fell at Yeshua's feet. What does that symbolize? Worship. He trusted. What does that symbolize? Submission. Repentance, worship, submission. This, my friends, is the greatest miracle of all. A brand new, born again heart is the greatest miracle of all miracles. Nothing compares to it. You want healing now? You want blessing now? Do you realize you have an eternity of that because of this miracle? The bottom line is we all have had spiritual leprosy, haven't we? We were all living outside the camp, the kingdom of heaven. We were all standing at a distance, separated from God. We were all wearing burial clothes, dead in our trespasses. And all of our hearts and souls were crying out, unclean, unclean, but God. It's not difficult for God to heal. I don't know if you realize that. It's not. 
But I have a question for all of us. What's a greater miracle? God healing our bodies? Or God healing our very souls? All I could say is, thanks be to God for healing us of our spiritual leprosy. Thank you, Yeshua, for being willing to reach out and touch a leper again and again and again. Thank you, Lord, for cleansing our leprous hearts. Now, throughout all eternity, we get to cry out, clean! Clean! One last question. What can wash away my sins? Let's stand up together. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Prince of all peace, Yeshua. Yes, I don't know. The assembly. Shalom. I love you. Shabbat shalom. <laughs>